Cucumbers are a popular and easy to grow vegetable that can be grown in both outdoor and indoor settings. They thrive in warm weather and need plenty of sunlight, water, and nutrients to grow properly. Here are some tips on how to plant and care for cucumber plants. Planting Cucumbers Choose a sunny location for your cucumber plants. They need at least 6 to 8 hours of direct sunlight per day. Plant your cucumber seeds or seedlings in well-draining soil that has been amended with organic matter, such as compost or aged manure. Cucumber plants prefer a soil pH of 6.0 to 7.0, so test your soil and adjust the pH if necessary. Plant cucumber seeds or seedlings about 1 inch deep and 6 inches apart in rows that are spaced 3 to 4 feet apart. Water the plants thoroughly after planting and keep the soil consistently moist throughout the growing season. Caring for Cucumbers Provide support for your cucumber plants. They can be grown on trellises, cages, or stakes to keep them off the ground and prevent them from getting tangled or diseased. Fertilize your cucumber plants regularly with a balanced fertilizer that contains nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Follow the manufacturer's instructions for application rates and timing. Monitor your plants for pests and diseases, such as cucumber beetles, powdery mildew, and downy mildew. Use organic pest control methods, such as hand-picking or spraying with neem oil, to control these problems. Harvest your cucumbers when they are mature but still small and tender. Most cucumbers are ready to harvest within 50 to 70 days of planting, depending on the variety. Soil Preparation Cucumbers thrive in well-draining soil that is rich in organic matter. Before planting, loosen the soil to a depth of 8 to 10 inches and amend it with compost or aged manure. This will improve soil fertility, drainage, and water retention. Watering Cucumbers require consistent watering to prevent stress and ensure proper growth. Water deeply once or twice a week, depending on weather conditions and soil moisture levels. Avoid overhead watering as it can lead to fungal diseases. Instead, use drip irrigation or a soaker hose to water at the base of the plants. Pest Control Cucumber plants are susceptible to several pests, including cucumber beetles, squash bugs, and spider mites. These pests can damage the leaves, stems, and fruit, reducing plant productivity. To control pests, use organic methods such as hand-picking, spraying with insecticidal soap or neem oil, or introducing beneficial insects such as ladybugs or lacewings. Disease Prevention Cucumber plants are also prone to several fungal diseases, including powdery mildew and downy mildew. These diseases can affect plant growth, reduce fruit yield, and cause leaf yellowing or browning. To prevent fungal diseases, avoid overhead watering, space plants properly for good air circulation, and apply a fungicide as needed. Varieties There are many different types of cucumber varieties to choose from, including slicing cucumbers, pickling cucumbers, and specialty varieties such as lemon cucumbers or Armenian cucumbers. Research and choose a variety that is well suited to your growing conditions and preferred use. 
Harvesting Cucumbers are ready to harvest when they are firm, dark green, and about 6 to 8 inches long. Pick them frequently to encourage more fruit production and prevent overripe or bitter cucumbers. Use sharp pruning shears or scissors to cut the cucumber stem cleanly, leaving a small piece of stem attached to the fruit. Pollination Cucumbers require pollination to produce fruit. Most cucumber varieties are pollinated by bees or other flying insects, so it's important to attract pollinators to your garden. Plant flowers such as marigolds or zinnias nearby, or provide nesting sites for bees and other beneficial insects. Training and pruning Cucumber plants can be trained to grow vertically by using trellises, cages, or stakes. This not only saves space in the garden but also promotes good air circulation and reduces the risk of fungal diseases. As the plants grow, tie the stems loosely to the support structure and prune off any lateral branches or suckers that may develop. Fertilization Cucumber plants require regular fertilization to promote healthy growth and fruit production. Use a balanced fertilizer that contains equal parts nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, and apply it every 3 to 4 weeks during the growing season. Alternatively, you can use organic fertilizers such as fish emulsion, bone meal, or compost tea. Storage Cucumbers can be stored in the refrigerator for up to 1 week after harvest. To keep them fresh, wrap them in paper towels or store them in a plastic bag with a few ventilation holes. Do not wash the cucumbers until you're ready to use them, as excess moisture can promote spoilage. Seed saving Oak trees are majestic and enduring symbols of strength, wisdom, and stability. With their wide-spreading branches, deep roots, and sturdy trunks, they have been admired and revered for centuries. Oak trees are also highly valued for their wood, which is used in construction, furniture making, and other applications. In this essay, we will explore the art and science of planting and caring for oak trees, with a focus on the techniques and practices that will ensure their longevity and health. Planting Oak Trees Planting an oak tree is a relatively straightforward process, but it requires careful planning and attention to detail. The first step is to choose a suitable site for the tree. Oak trees require well-drained soil, plenty of sunlight, and enough space to grow to their full size. It's also important to consider factors such as proximity to buildings, power lines, and other obstacles that could interfere with the tree's growth. Once a site has been selected, it's time to prepare the soil for planting. The soil should be loosened to a depth of at least 18 inches, and any rocks, debris, or weeds should be removed. If the soil is compacted or poorly drained, it may be necessary to amend it with organic matter or sand to improve drainage. Next, a hole should be dug that is deep enough to accommodate the tree's root system. The hole should be wider than the root ball, and the sides of the hole should be sloped to allow for proper drainage. Before planting the tree, it's a good idea to add a slow-release fertilizer to the bottom of the hole to provide nutrients for the tree's early growth. 
Once the tree is in place, the hole should be backfilled with soil and firmly tamped down to eliminate air pockets. The tree should be watered thoroughly, and a layer of mulch should be added around the base of the tree to help retain moisture and suppress weeds. Caring for Oak Trees Once an oak tree has been planted, it requires ongoing care to ensure its health and vitality. The most important factor in caring for an oak tree is proper watering. Young trees should be watered regularly, especially during hot, dry weather, to prevent dehydration. Mature trees may not require as much watering, but they should still be monitored for signs of stress, such as wilting leaves or drooping branches. In addition to watering, oak trees require regular pruning to remove dead, diseased, or damaged branches. Pruning should be done during the tree's dormant season, which is typically in the winter months. When pruning, it's important to use clean, sharp tools and to make clean cuts to avoid damaging the tree. Another important aspect of caring for oak trees is fertilization. While young trees may benefit from regular applications of fertilizer, mature trees may only need occasional fertilization to maintain their health. It's important to choose a fertilizer that is appropriate for oak trees and to follow the manufacturer's instructions for application. It's important to monitor oak trees for signs of pests and diseases. Common pests that can affect oak trees include oak gall, oak twig pruner, and oak lace bug. Diseases that can affect oak trees include oak wilt, bacterial leaf scorch, and anthracnose. Early detection and treatment of pests and diseases is critical to preventing damage to the tree and ensuring its long-term health. One key aspect of oak tree care is understanding the specific needs of different oak species. There are over 600 species of oak trees, each with its own unique characteristics and requirements for growth and survival. Some oak species prefer drier soil, while others thrive in wetter environments. Some oak species are more susceptible to certain pests and diseases than others. Understanding the specific needs of the oak species in your area is critical to ensuring their success. Another important factor in oak tree care is understanding the role of oak trees in their ecosystems. Oak trees provide habitat and food for a wide variety of wildlife, including birds, insects, and mammals. They also play a critical role in maintaining healthy soil and water systems. Oak trees have deep roots that can help stabilize soil, prevent erosion, and filter pollutants from water. By caring for oak trees, we can help maintain healthy ecosystems and support biodiversity. In addition to ecological benefits, oak trees also have cultural and historical significance. Oak trees have been used for centuries for everything from shipbuilding to barrel making to fuel for firewood. Oak trees have also been revered as symbols of strength, wisdom, and longevity in many cultures around the world. By planting and caring for oak trees, we can honor this rich history and cultural heritage. It's important to recognize the broader context in which oak trees exist. Oak trees, like many other tree species, are facing a range of threats, including climate change, habitat loss, and invasive species. 
By planting and caring for oak trees, we can help address these challenges and contribute to a more sustainable future. One important aspect of oak tree care that is often overlooked is the impact of urbanization on tree health. Urban areas can pose significant challenges to tree growth, including soil compaction, pollution, and limited space for root growth. In addition, urban areas often have higher temperatures and lower humidity than surrounding rural areas, which can increase stress on trees. To address these challenges, urban planners and arborists are developing strategies to promote tree health and growth in urban environments. These strategies include planting trees in large, open spaces to allow for adequate root growth. using specialized soils to improve soil structure and drainage, and planting species that are well adapted to urban conditions. Another important aspect of urban tree care is pruning. Pruning can help maintain the health and appearance of urban trees, while also reducing the risk of damage to nearby structures and power lines. However, Pruning must be done carefully to avoid damaging the tree, and should be done in accordance with industry best practices. It's important to recognize the importance of community involvement in oak tree care. Planting and caring for oak trees can be a powerful way to bring communities together and promote environmental stewardship. By involving community members in tree planting and care, we can build a sense of shared responsibility for the health and vitality of our urban forests. Another important aspect of oak tree care is the role of fire in maintaining healthy oak ecosystems. Climate change is one of the most pressing global challenges of our time and its effects are being felt in a variety of ways, including in the agricultural sector. Agriculture is a crucial industry that provides food and other essential products for human consumption and use. And it is vital that we take steps to ensure that it can continue to operate sustainably in the face of changing environmental conditions. One of the key challenges facing agriculture in the context of climate change is the need to adapt to changing conditions. As temperatures rise and weather patterns become more unpredictable, farmers must find ways to adjust their practices to ensure that crops can continue to grow and thrive. This may involve changing planting schedules, using new varieties of crops that are better suited to warmer or wetter conditions or implementing new irrigation techniques to deal with changing water availability. Another challenge facing agriculture in the context of climate change is the need to mitigate its contribution to greenhouse gas emissions. Agriculture is a significant source of greenhouse gas emissions, primarily through the use of fertilizers and other inputs that release carbon dioxide and other gases into the atmosphere. To address this issue, farmers must adopt more sustainable practices that reduce the need for these inputs and promote the sequestration of carbon in soils and vegetation. In addition to these challenges, there are also broader economic and social issues that must be addressed in order to ensure the long-term sustainability of agriculture in the face of climate change. For example, Changes in weather patterns and other environmental conditions may lead to crop failures and reduced yields, which can have significant economic impacts on farmers and communities that depend on agriculture. In some cases, these impacts may exacerbate existing inequalities and increase food insecurity. To address these challenges, a range of approaches are needed, including research and development of new technologies and practices. 
policies and regulations that promote sustainable agriculture, and support for farmers and communities that are most vulnerable to the impacts of climate change. This will require collaboration and coordination among a wide range of stakeholders, including farmers, researchers, policymakers, and civil society organizations. Another challenge facing agriculture in the context of climate change is the increased risk of pests and diseases. As temperatures rise, pests and diseases that were previously not able to survive in certain areas may now be able to thrive. This can lead to significant crop losses and increased use of pesticides and other chemicals, which can have negative impacts on the environment and human health. To address this challenge, farmers must adopt integrated pest management practices that prioritize prevention and use of non-chemical methods whenever possible. Water availability is another key challenge for agriculture in the context of climate change. As temperatures rise and weather patterns become more unpredictable, water availability for irrigation may become increasingly uncertain. This can have significant impacts on crop yields and quality, as well as on farmers' livelihoods. To address this challenge, farmers must adopt water-efficient practices, such as drip irrigation and rainwater harvesting. And policymakers must work to ensure that water resources are managed in a sustainable and equitable manner. The impacts of climate change on agriculture also have broader implications for food security and nutrition. As weather patterns become more unpredictable and extreme, the availability and affordability of food may become increasingly uncertain. This can lead to increased food insecurity and malnutrition, particularly in vulnerable communities that rely on agriculture for their livelihoods. To address these challenges, policies and programs are needed that promote sustainable agriculture, protect vulnerable populations, and ensure access to healthy and nutritious food for all. Another challenge facing agriculture in the context of climate change is the depletion of soil quality. Climate change can lead to soil erosion, nutrient depletion, and decreased soil fertility, which can have significant impacts on crop yields and quality. This can exacerbate food insecurity and reduce farmers' incomes. To address this challenge, farmers must adopt sustainable soil management practices that prioritize soil health and conservation, such as reduced tillage and cover cropping. Climate change also has implications for agricultural biodiversity. As temperatures and weather patterns change, certain crops may no longer be viable in certain areas. Leading to a loss of genetic diversity and reduced resilience in the face of changing environmental conditions. This can have significant impacts on food security and nutrition, as well as on the cultural and ecological significance of agricultural biodiversity. To address this challenge, policies and programs are needed that promote the conservation and sustainable use of agricultural biodiversity including the use of traditional crop varieties and wild relatives. The impacts of climate change on agriculture also have significant social and economic implications. As weather patterns become more unpredictable and extreme, farmers may face increased economic risks and reduced incomes. Particularly in vulnerable communities that rely on agriculture for their livelihoods. This can exacerbate inequalities and increase social tensions. To address these challenges, policies and programs are needed that promote sustainable and equitable agricultural development. Support for smallholder farmers and investment in rural infrastructure and services. 
The impacts of climate change on agriculture are not limited to the production of food and other products. Agriculture also plays a key role in shaping landscapes, managing ecosystems, and providing ecosystem services, such as carbon sequestration and water regulation. As climate change alters these ecosystems, the services they provide may be compromised, leading to negative impacts on human well-being and ecological sustainability. To address this challenge, policies and programs are needed that promote the conservation and sustainable management of ecosystems. And that recognize the multiple benefits that agriculture can provide beyond food production. Another challenge facing agriculture in the context of climate change is the potential for increased conflicts over natural resources, such as water and land. As climate change alters the availability and distribution of these resources, it can lead to competition and tensions between different users, including farmers, pastoralists, and urban residents. This can exacerbate existing conflicts and create new ones, with negative impacts on social stability and economic development. To address this challenge, policies and programs are needed that promote sustainable and equitable management of natural resources, and that provide mechanisms for conflict resolution and cooperation. Climate change also has implications for agricultural trade and markets. As weather patterns become more unpredictable and extreme, global food supplies may become more volatile and prices more volatile, leading to increased market volatility and price spikes. This can have significant impacts on the livelihoods of farmers and the food security of vulnerable populations. To address this challenge, policies and programs are needed that promote resilient and sustainable agricultural trade and market systems. And that support the development of local and regional food systems that are less vulnerable to global market fluctuations. As the world's demand for chocolate continues to increase, so does the importance of cocoa farmers in supplying the raw material. However, cocoa farmers face many challenges throughout the production and consumption process, which can negatively affect their livelihoods and communities. In this essay, we will explore the difficulties that cocoa farmers face and possible solutions to address them. Firstly, cocoa farming is a labor-intensive process that requires a lot of time, effort, and resources. Cocoa trees are delicate and require a lot of attention, including regular pruning, fertilizing, and pest control. Moreover, cocoa farming is often done by small-scale farmers who lack access to the necessary equipment, knowledge, and financial resources to maximize their yields. This leads to lower productivity, lower quality, and lower income for farmers and their families. Secondly, the market for cocoa is highly volatile, with prices fluctuating greatly depending on supply and demand. Farmers often sell their cocoa beans to middlemen, who take advantage of their lack of market knowledge and bargaining power to offer lower prices. This leaves farmers vulnerable to price drops and unable to earn a fair income. Moreover, as the demand for chocolate increases, cocoa farmers are under pressure to increase their production. However, this often leads to the conversion of forests and other natural habitats into cocoa plantations, causing deforestation, soil erosion, and other environmental problems. Thirdly, cocoa farmers face challenges related to their working conditions and social rights. 
Many farmers work long hours in harsh conditions, with little access to education or health care. Moreover, child labor and forced labor are prevalent in the cocoa industry, with many children being forced to work on cocoa farms instead of attending school. This not only harms their education and future prospects but also perpetuates the cycle of poverty and inequality. To address these challenges, several initiatives have been developed to support cocoa farmers and promote sustainable cocoa production. These initiatives aim to provide farmers with the necessary resources, training, and knowledge to improve their productivity, quality, and income. For example, the Cocoa Life Program, launched by Mondelez International, aims to empower cocoa farmers and communities by providing access to education, health care, and other essential services. Similarly, the Fair Trade Certification ensures that cocoa farmers receive a fair price for their products and have better working conditions. Moreover, Several environmental initiatives have been launched to promote sustainable cocoa production and protect natural habitats. For instance, the Cocoa and Forests Initiative, launched by the governments of Ghana and Côte d'Ivoire, aims to eliminate cocoa-related deforestation by promoting reforestation, agroforestry, and sustainable land use practices. Similarly, the Rainforest Alliance certification ensures that cocoa farmers adopt sustainable farming practices that protect the environment and biodiversity. One of the biggest challenges that cocoa farmers face is the lack of access to credit and financing. Most cocoa farmers are small-scale farmers who do not have the necessary collateral or credit history to secure loans from banks or other financial institutions. This makes it difficult for them to invest in their farms, purchase equipment and supplies, and manage their cash flow. To address this challenge, some organizations have developed microfinance programs that provide small loans to farmers at affordable rates. These loans can help farmers invest in their farms, increase their productivity, and improve their quality of life. Another challenge that cocoa farmers face is the lack of access to information and technology. Many farmers lack basic literacy and numeracy skills, which makes it difficult for them to access and use information about farming practices, market trends, and pricing. Moreover, many farmers do not have access to modern technology such as smartphones and computers, which limits their ability to connect with other farmers, market their products, and access valuable resources. To address this challenge, some organizations have developed mobile-based applications and other digital tools that provide farmers with access to information and resources. Furthermore, climate change is also a major challenge for cocoa farmers, as it can lead to changes in weather patterns, increased pest and disease pressure, and reduced yields. To address this challenge, some organizations have developed climate-smart farming practices that help farmers adapt to the changing climate. These practices include the use of drought-tolerant crops, agroforestry, soil conservation, and water management. Another challenge that cocoa farmers face is the lack of access to education and training. Many farmers lack formal education and training in modern farming techniques, which limits their ability to increase their productivity, improve their yields, and generate a sustainable income. To address this challenge, 
some organizations have developed farmer training programs that provide farmers with the necessary knowledge and skills to improve their farming practices. These programs cover a wide range of topics, including soil management, pest and disease control, post-harvest handling, and marketing. Additionally, gender inequality is also a major challenge for cocoa farmers, as women often face discrimination and unequal access to resources and opportunities. Women farmers may have limited access to land, credit, and education, which limits their ability to invest in their farms and improve their yields. To address this challenge, some organizations have developed gender-focused initiatives that aim to empower women farmers and promote gender equality in the cocoa industry. These initiatives include training programs, access to credit and financing, and advocacy for gender-inclusive policies and practices. Furthermore, supply chain transparency is another challenge in the cocoa industry. Many cocoa farmers do not have direct access to the global market and may not be aware of where their cocoa beans end up or how much they are being sold for. This lack of transparency can lead to a lack of accountability and fair trade practices, which can negatively affect farmers and their communities. To address this challenge, some organizations have developed supply chain traceability programs that allow farmers to track their cocoa beans from farm to market. These programs help ensure that farmers receive a fair price for their products and that their beans are sourced ethically and sustainably. Another challenge that cocoa farmers face is the lack of access to adequate health care. Many farmers live in remote areas with limited access to healthcare services, which can lead to untreated illnesses and injuries that can affect their ability to work and earn a living. Moreover, some illnesses and diseases such as malaria, HIV-AIDS, and tuberculosis are prevalent in cocoa-growing regions, which further exacerbates the healthcare challenges for farmers and their families. To address this challenge, some organizations have developed healthcare programs that provide farmers and their families with access to basic healthcare services, including vaccinations, malaria prevention, and treatment. Additionally, the issue of child labor is a major challenge in the cocoa industry, with an estimated 2 million children involved in hazardous labor on cocoa farms. Children may be forced to work long hours in dangerous conditions, which can negatively affect their health, education, and overall well-being. To address this challenge, some organizations have developed child labor monitoring and remediation systems that aim to identify and remediate cases of child labor in the cocoa supply chain. These systems involve working with farmers, communities, and other stakeholders to identify cases of child labor. Cocoa and chocolate products have been consumed for centuries, and their popularity has only grown over time. The global chocolate market is expected to reach use 171 billion by 2026, with Asia Pacific being the fastest growing market. The majority of cocoa and chocolate production is concentrated in West Africa, with Ghana and Ivory Coast being the two largest cocoa producers in the world. In recent years, there has been a growing trend towards sustainable and ethically sourced cocoa and chocolate products. Consumers are increasingly aware of the environmental and social impacts of their purchases. And companies are responding by implementing certification programs such as Fairtrade, Rainforest Alliance, and UTS. In terms of consumption patterns, 
dark chocolate is gaining popularity due to its perceived health benefits. Such as being a source of antioxidants and having a lower sugar content compared to milk chocolate. The premium chocolate segment is also growing, with consumers willing to pay more for high quality, artisanal chocolate products. On the domestic front, chocolate consumption varies widely between countries. Switzerland, Belgium, and Germany have the highest per capita consumption of chocolate in the world, while countries in Asia and Africa consume significantly less chocolate. In the United States, the chocolate industry generates over $21 billion in annual revenue, with milk chocolate being the most popular type of chocolate consumed. One major factor that has impacted the cocoa and chocolate industry in recent years is the issue of child labor. The West African region, which accounts for over 70% of the world's cocoa production, has been criticized for its use of child labor and human trafficking. This has led to increased pressure on companies to ensure that their cocoa supply chains are free from child labor and to implement measures to address this issue. In response, many companies have established programs and initiatives aimed at addressing child labor and promoting sustainable and ethical practices in the cocoa industry. For example, Nestle, one of the world's largest chocolate manufacturers, has pledged to eliminate child labor from its cocoa supply chain and has implemented a number of initiatives to improve working conditions for cocoa farmers. Another trend in the cocoa and chocolate industry is the increasing popularity of premium and specialty chocolate products. Consumers are willing to pay a premium for high-quality chocolate products that are made with premium cocoa beans and feature unique flavors and textures. Artisanal chocolate makers are gaining popularity, and many are sourcing their cocoa beans directly from farmers or cooperatives to ensure transparency and sustainability in their supply chains. On the international market, demand for cocoa and chocolate products is growing in emerging economies such as China and India. These markets are experiencing a rise in disposable income and a growing middle class, leading to increased demand for luxury and indulgent food products such as chocolate. In addition, the popularity of Western-style confectionery products is also driving growth in these markets. In terms of health trends, there is a growing awareness of the potential health benefits of cocoa and chocolate consumption. Studies have suggested that cocoa may have antioxidant properties and may be beneficial for cardiovascular health. As a result, there is increasing demand for dark chocolate, which has a higher cocoa content, and is perceived as a healthier option than milk chocolate. One factor that has influenced cocoa and chocolate consumption is the rise of e-commerce and online retail. This has allowed consumers to easily access a wider range of chocolate products from around the world, and has enabled smaller artisanal chocolate makers to reach a global audience. Online chocolate sales are growing, with companies such as Amazon and Alibaba investing in the sector. In addition to the health benefits of cocoa consumption, there is also a growing interest in the flavor and texture of chocolate. This has led to an increased focus on the sensory aspects of chocolate, with companies investing in research and development to create new and innovative flavor combinations and textures. There is also a trend towards more personalized and customized chocolate products, with consumers able to create their own chocolate bars or select from a range of flavors and ingredients. Another factor that is influencing cocoa and chocolate consumption is the growing interest in sustainability and environmental issues. Consumers are increasingly aware of the impact of their purchases on the environment and are looking for products that are produced in an environmentally friendly and sustainable way. This has led to an increased focus on organic and fair trade chocolate products, as well as a growing interest. In Bean to Bar Chocolate Production, which aims to promote transparency and sustainability in the supply chain. There is also a growing interest in the history and cultural significance of cocoa and chocolate. 
Many consumers are interested in the origins and traditions of cocoa and chocolate production, and are looking for products that reflect this heritage. This has led to an increased focus on single-origin chocolate, which is made from cocoa beans sourced from a specific region or country. And is seen as a way to showcase the unique flavors and characteristics of that region. One trend that has emerged in recent years is the increasing use of cocoa and chocolate in savory food products. Chefs and food manufacturers are exploring the use of cocoa and chocolate in savory dishes such as stews, marinades, and sauces, as well as in snacks such as chocolate-covered pretzels and popcorn. This has led to an increased demand for high-quality cocoa products that can be used in both sweet and savory applications. Another factor that is influencing cocoa and chocolate consumption is the rise of plant-based diets. Many consumers are opting for vegan or vegetarian diets, and are looking for chocolate products that are free from animal products such as milk or butter. This has led to an increased focus on vegan chocolate products, as well as the use of alternative sweeteners such as coconut sugar or stevia. In addition to traditional chocolate products such as bars and truffles, there is also growing demand for chocolate-based beverages. Hot chocolate, chocolate milk, and chocolate smoothies are all popular options, and there is increasing interest in more gourmet and artisanal versions of these drinks. This has led to an increased focus on the quality and flavor of the cocoa used in these beverages, as well as on the presentation and packaging of the products. The cocoa and chocolate industry is also influenced by broader economic and political factors. Fluctuations in the price of cocoa beans, changes in government regulations, and geopolitical instability can all impact the supply and demand for cocoa and chocolate products. For example, the ongoing conflict in Syria has disrupted the country's cocoa industry, leading to a shortage of cocoa beans and a rise in prices. The important factor that is impacting cocoa and chocolate consumption is the COVID-19 pandemic. The pandemic has disrupted supply chains and distribution networks, leading to shortages of cocoa products and rising prices. In addition, lockdowns and social distancing measures have had a significant impact on the hospitality sector, which is a major consumer of chocolate products. However, there has also been a surge in demand for chocolate products among consumers who are seeking comfort and indulgence during these difficult times. Another trend that is shaping the cocoa and chocolate industry is the increasing focus on transparency and traceability in the supply chain. Consumers are demanding more information about the origin of their chocolate products, as well as the conditions under which the cocoa was grown and harvested. This has led to an increased interest in direct trade and direct sourcing models, as well as the use of blockchain technology to track the journey of cocoa beans from farm to consumer. Plectranthus amboinicus, also known as Cuban oregano, is a perennial herb that belongs to the Lamiaceae family. It is native to southern and eastern Africa, but it can also be found in other tropical and subtropical regions around the world. This plant is widely used in traditional medicine and cooking, and it has a strong and pleasant aroma. To grow Plectranthus amboinicus, you need to provide it with the right conditions. This plant prefers a warm and humid environment with temperatures ranging from 20 to 30 degrees Celsius. It can be grown both indoors and outdoors, but it needs to be protected from direct sunlight and strong winds. Plectranthus amboinicus requires well-drained soil and regular watering to keep it moist but not too wet. You can fertilize it with a balanced fertilizer once a month during the growing season. To propagate Plectranthus amboinicus, you can use stem cuttings. Take a stem cutting of about 10 cm in length and remove the lower leaves. Dip the stem cutting in rooting hormone powder and plant it in moist soil. 
Cover the cutting with a plastic bag or a transparent container to create a humid environment. Keep the soil moist in the cutting in a warm and shaded area until it develops roots and new leaves. To care for Plectranthus amboinicus, you need to prune it regularly to encourage bushy growth and prevent it from becoming leggy. You can also pinch off the tips of the stems to promote branching. This plant is susceptible to pests and diseases, so you need to inspect it regularly and treat any issues promptly. Common pests that can affect Plectranthus amboinicus include spider mites, mealybugs, and whiteflies. Lighting As mentioned, Plectranthus amboinicus needs to be protected from direct sunlight. It prefers bright, indirect light, so it's best to place it near a window that receives filtered sunlight or under a shade cloth outdoors. Soil Plectranthus amboinicus prefers well-draining soil with a pH range of 6.0 to 7.5. You can mix perlite or sand with potting soil to improve drainage. If you're planting it in the ground, make sure the soil is fertile and well-draining. Watering Plectranthus amboinicus likes to be kept moist, but not waterlogged. Water it when the top inch of soil feels dry to the touch. Avoid overwatering, as this can lead to root rot. Harvesting You can harvest the leaves of Plectranthus amboinicus throughout the growing season. The leaves are best harvested when the plant is young, as they tend to become tough and bitter as the plant ages. You can use the leaves fresh or dried for culinary purposes or to make herbal teas. Repotting If you're growing Plectranthus amboinicus in a container, you'll need to repot it every year or two. Choose a container that's slightly larger than the current one and fill it with fresh potting soil. Gently remove the plant from its old container, loosen the roots, and place it in the new container. Water it thoroughly after repotting. Overwintering, if you live in a cold climate, you'll need to bring your Plectranthus amboinicus indoors for the winter. It can be grown as a houseplant if you provide it with bright, indirect light and keep the soil moist. You can also take stem cuttings before bringing it indoors and root them in water or soil to create new plants. Humidity Plectranthus amboinicus prefers high humidity levels, which can be difficult to achieve in dry indoor environments. You can increase the humidity around the plant by placing a tray of water near it, misting the leaves with water regularly, or using a humidifier. Pests and Diseases Plectranthus amboinicus is generally a hardy plant, but it can be susceptible to pests and diseases. Common pests include spider mites, mealybugs, and aphids. To prevent infestations, inspect the plant regularly and treat any issues promptly. You can use insecticidal soap or neem oil to control pests. Plectranthus amboinicus can also be affected by fungal diseases such as powdery mildew and root rot. To prevent these issues, make sure the plant has good air circulation and avoid overwatering. Companion planting, Plectranthus amboinicus can be grown alongside other herbs and vegetables in the garden. It is a good companion plant for tomatoes, peppers, and eggplants, as it repels pests such as aphids and spider mites. Culinary uses, Plectranthus amboinicus has a strong and pleasant aroma that makes it a popular herb for culinary purposes. It is commonly used in Caribbean, Latin American, and Asian cuisines to add flavor to soups, stews, meats, and seafood. The leaves can also be used to make teas and infused oils. Medicinal uses Plectranthus amboinicus has a long history of use in traditional medicine to treat a variety of ailments. It is believed to have anti inflammatory, antibacterial, antifungal, and antiviral properties. 
the leaves can be used topically to relieve pain and inflammation, or taken orally as a tea to soothe digestive issues. Harvesting and preserving, to harvest Plectranthus amboinicus, simply pinch or snip off the leaves as needed. The leaves can be used fresh, dried, or frozen for later use. To dry the leaves, hang them upside down in a warm and dry area until they are crispy. To freeze them, wash and dry the leaves, then place them in a plastic bag and store them in the freezer. Varieties Plectranthus amboinicus has several varieties that vary in leaf color and size. The most common variety is the green leaved type, but there are also variegated and purple leaved varieties. The variegated variety has leaves with green and white stripes, while the purple leaved variety has leaves with a purple hue. Landscape uses Plectranthus amboinicus is not only a useful herb, but it can also be a beautiful addition to the garden. It has a bushy and compact growth habit that makes it ideal for borders, hedges, and container gardens. Date palm is a highly valuable crop, both economically and nutritionally, that is grown in many regions around the world. In this paragraph, we will discuss the production and area of cultivation of date palm trees in the country. In recent years, date palm production in the country has increased significantly, driven by the growing demand for dates in domestic and international markets. According to statistics, the country's total production of dates in 2020 reached 1.2 million tons, an increase of 5% compared to the previous year. The country has a long history of date palm cultivation, with many regions suitable for growing this crop due to favorable climate and soil conditions. In particular, the southern provinces such as Bintuan, Nintuan, and Kanhoa are known for their large-scale date palm plantations, with thousands of hectares dedicated to this crop. These provinces have the ideal climate for date palm cultivation, with hot and dry weather throughout the year as well as sandy soil that is rich in minerals and nutrients. In addition to the southern provinces, date palm trees are also grown in other regions of the country, including the Central Highlands and the Mekong Delta. However, the production in these areas is much lower compared to the southern provinces due to less favorable growing conditions. The government has also been actively promoting the development of date palm cultivation in the country, providing support in the form of subsidies and technical assistance to farmers. This has resulted in an increase in the area of cultivation of date palm trees in recent years, with an estimated 30,000 hectares of land dedicated to this crop across the country. In recent years, the demand for dates has been steadily increasing due to their nutritional value and health benefits. Dates are rich in fiber, vitamins, and minerals, making them a healthy addition to any diet. The country has been exporting dates to many countries, including China, the United States, and European countries. This has contributed significantly to the country's agricultural exports, boosting the economy and providing income for farmers. The cultivation of date palm trees requires significant investment and expertise, as the trees have a long gestation period and require specialized care. However, the returns on investment can be substantial, as the trees can produce fruit for up to 100 years, making them a long-term investment for farmers. The government has been working to promote sustainable date palm cultivation practices. Encouraging farmers to adopt modern techniques such as drip irrigation, which can reduce water usage and improve crop yields. The government has also been promoting organic farming practices, 
which can help to improve the quality of the dates and increase their market value. In addition to promoting sustainable farming practices, the government has also been investing in research and development to improve the productivity and quality of date palm trees. Researchers have been working to develop new varieties of dates that are more resistant to pests and diseases, as well as developing new technologies to improve the processing and packaging of dates. One of the challenges facing date palm cultivation in the country is the increasing pressure on land use, particularly in the southern provinces where date palm plantations are concentrated. Land use changes due to urbanization and infrastructure development have led to the loss of agricultural land, including date palm plantations. This has forced farmers to seek alternative sources of income, leading to a decline in the area of cultivation of date palm trees. To address this issue, the government has been working to promote land use planning that takes into account the needs of both urban development and agricultural production. The government has also been promoting the use of agroforestry systems, which integrate date palm trees with other crops and livestock, as a way to optimize land use and increase productivity. Another challenge facing date palm cultivation is the lack of market transparency and price volatility. Farmers often face price fluctuations due to the lack of standardized pricing mechanisms and the dominance of middlemen in the market. This makes it difficult for farmers to plan and invest in their farms, and can lead to reduced profitability. To address this issue, the government has been working to improve market transparency and access to market information for farmers. The government has also been promoting the development of farmer cooperatives and direct marketing channels, which can help farmers to secure better prices for their produce and increase their bargaining power in the market. Another challenge facing date palm cultivation in the country is the threat of pests and diseases. Date palm trees are vulnerable to a range of pests and diseases, including the red palm weevil, bayou disease, and fusarium wilt. These pests and diseases can cause significant damage to date palm plantations, leading to reduced yields and even the death of the trees. To address this issue, the government has been working to promote integrated pest management practices. which involve the use of a combination of biological, chemical, and cultural control methods to manage pests and diseases. The government has also been providing technical assistance and training to farmers on pest and disease management techniques. Water scarcity is also a major challenge facing date palm cultivation in the country. Date palm trees require significant amounts of water to grow and produce fruit, and with the increasing demand for water in urban areas and other sectors. Farmers are facing increasing competition for water resources. To address this issue, the government has been promoting the use of drip irrigation, which can reduce water usage by up to 70% compared to traditional flood irrigation methods. The government has also been working to improve water management practices and increase the efficiency of irrigation systems. In addition to these challenges, date palm cultivation in the country is also facing competition from other countries. Particularly in the Middle East and North Africa region, which are the world's largest producers of dates. To remain competitive, the country has been working to improve the quality of its dates through investments in research and development and improvements in processing and packaging technologies. Another challenge facing date palm cultivation in the country is the lack of skilled labor in the industry. Date palm cultivation requires specialized skills, including pruning, 
fertilization, and pest and disease management. However, there is a shortage of trained and experienced workers in the industry, which can lead to reduced productivity and increased production costs. To address this issue, the government has been promoting vocational training programs for farmers and farm workers, which provide training on a range of skills related to date palm cultivation, including irrigation management, pest and disease management, and post-harvest handling. The government has also been providing incentives for young people to enter the agricultural sector, including scholarships and grants for agricultural education and training. Another challenge facing date palm cultivation is the impact of climate change, which is leading to more frequent and severe weather events, including droughts and floods. These events can have a significant impact on date palm production, leading to reduced yields and even the loss of entire plantations. To address this issue, the government has been working to promote climate-smart agriculture practices, which can help to increase the resilience of date palm plantations to the impacts of climate change. These practices include the use of drought-resistant varieties of date palm trees, These practices include the use of drought-resistant varieties of date palm trees. These practices include the use of drought-resistant varieties of date palm trees.